Let's find you the best wireless dog fence to give your pup the freedom of off-leash play and give you some peace of mind. I'm only covering completely wireless systems. I bought them all and tested them like crazy to learn about their boundary feedback logic, how easy they are to use, how well they hold the boundary line, and all sorts of things. I probably took it a bit too far. I think the spot on fence is the most impressive option, but there are some situations where it's not the best fit. I'll leave links in the video description to get you the best price on each of the wireless dog fences discussed in this video. And let's dive right into what Spot On does better than the other wireless dog fences. Spot On's boundary feedback is the most reliable and fair to dogs of all the systems I've used. It gives distinct alert, warning, and correction tones so that your dog can understand when they're approaching the boundary and return back to safety. The PetSafe Guardian is also pretty good at this, although there's only one warning zone before the corrections start. There's the alert. And there's also a time dependent function. So if your dog lingers in that warning zone, the guardian will switch over to corrections. Yep. The Halo Color 3 should be good at this, and sometimes it is, but all too often it will skip one of the feedback zones and jump right to correction. There's the warning right there. Oh God, oh God. Or it will progress through the feedback zones when I'm standing still. And the PetSafe wireless containment system's not really fair to dogs. It gives them a warning before the oh, correction, but Look, even if they yep. turn around, it's still going to give them that correction. The spot on fence is the easiest to use. Everything is contained within the collar and you control it via a smartphone app. You set up fences by holding the collar and walking the boundary, and it'll drop the fence posts for you as you walk. You can add GPS based home zones and keep out zones to further customize your fence. The Halo Collar 3 is a close runner up. The biggest difference being you have to drop those fence posts manually. And you're capped at 20 fence posts, whereas with Spot On, it's virtually unlimited. Halo also addresses those home zones and keep out zones using their Bluetooth beacons. These zones can only be circular, and more importantly, they don't work very well. The PetSafe Guardian's a little bit less sophisticated. You can only draw fences manually on the app, which you can also do with Halo and Spot On if you prefer. Plus, the Guardian uses a base station, rather than being fully self-contained like the Spot On or the Halo. And it doesn't offer live tracking. The PetSafe Wireless is pretty easy to use, but it's old school. It has a base station and you can only set circular boundaries. You can make them bigger or smaller by spinning a dial on the base station, but there's no smartphone app, there's no live tracking, and if your power goes out, as far as the caller is concerned, your dog's outside the fence and they're gonna get a correction. Spot On was the first GPS dog fence, and to this day, it has the best GPS technology. This is a simple fact from a component standpoint. It's the only one that uses a dual feed active GPS antenna. Spot On has also been developing their AI the longest, and the proof is in the pudding. All GPS devices are subject to drift over the course of the day, and this can be particularly prominent in difficult situations like forested areas. But even when it's really challenged, the Spot On still provides reliable feedback zones. You may just need to provide more of a buffer in scenarios when drift is high. The Halo Color 3 closed the gap quite a bit by incorporating an active GPS antenna and some AI signal processing, but there's still some room for improvement like I mentioned earlier. The PetSafe Guardian makes no mention of an active GPS antenna or any AI signal processing. And the PetSafe Wireless is the only wireless dog fence discussed here that doesn't use GPS. It does hold the boundary lines with minimal drift, but obviously there's a big trade-off in its capabilities overall. So where does the spot on fall short? Well, the first place is in battery life. You're really only gonna get a day's use out of a full charge with the spot on collar, although it only takes an hour or two to charge. The Halo collar is quite similar here. The PetSafe Guardian has a nice leg up. You can get about 72 hours of use up a full charge and it has a removable battery, so you can have another one charged and ready to go. The PetSafe Wireless can go for months on a single battery, but they're disposable and they're proprietary, so you gotta make sure you have some extras on hand. There's also the PetSafe Stay and Play, which is a bit of an upgraded version and has long lasting and rechargeable collars. With Spot On, Halo, and the PetSafe Guardian, the fence sizes are virtually unlimited on the high end. Spot On recommends a minimum fence size of a half an acre, while it performs better than the other GPS fences in small quarters, I do think that half acre is a good rule of thumb. Halo claims you can make fences as small as 250 square feet, but they simply don't perform that well with small fences in my experience. Approach the boundary one more time. Oh, oh, oh God. And the PetSafe Guardian needs three quarters of an acre, so perhaps a little more buffer there. The PetSafe Wireless is probably your best bet for yards much smaller than a half an acre, because the fences can be quite small. Granted, they can only be circular and no bigger than a half an acre, but that's just the nature of the beast. Then of course, there's price. Spot On is the most expensive wireless dog fence on this list, and while you're not required to have a cellular subscription, it's definitely nice to have. The Halo Collar is a bit cheaper than the Spot On, 
but it's the only wireless dog fence that flat out requires a cellular subscription to use it. The PetSafe Guardian is a touch cheaper than the Halo, and the PetSafe Wireless is the cheapest of them all. Neither of the PetSafe fences even have the option for a cellular subscription. Now, if you have multiple dogs, Spot On and Halo offer a bit of a discount when you buy multiple collars, but you're really paying close to full price for each dog. The PetSafe Guardian's base station can support up to five collars, and each additional collar is only about $350. And the PetSafe Wireless can support unlimited collars, with each add-on collar being about $150. Okay, to sum it all up, I put together a comparison table for you guys. Feel free to pause the screen here to find the best wireless dog fence for your needs. But just to rattle it off here, if you have a smaller yard, then the PetSafe Wireless is probably going to be your best bet. Or the PetSafe Stay and Play, which is quite similar, perhaps a little nicer. The PetSafe Guardian is a reliable wireless fence, albeit with some limitations. If you have a bigger yard, you need a bit of extra battery life, or you don't want to pay top dollar, then I think it's a reasonable choice. The Halo Collar made a big splash, and it has some things going for it, especially with the upgrades in the Halo Collar 3. But I just don't like how unreliable it can be. Nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. Sometimes it works just fine, but this is your dog's safety. Oh, and now I'm getting shocked out of nowhere. Oh my goodness. <laughs> really, it should work every time. And if you want the best performing wireless dog fence that's easy to use, and you can count on it time after time, then you should go for the spot-on GPS fence.